director here at the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living in Amato, Arizona. And we are in fact meeting outdoors at the Oasis here at the Amato Territory Ranch. And I wanna take a moment and I wanna invite everyone to focus, close your eyes and breathe. With every breath, accept that light of spirit into your heart, deep down into your soul. Get ready to receive the words of our trustee today and of our practitioner today and from Reverend Donna. everybody gosh it seems like a long time since I've been up here <laughs> maybe I don't know February or something so I hope that all of you have voted or plan to vote I am sick and tired of seeing political ads and I sponsored that ad so good morning and on behalf of Reverend Donna Mower and the Board of Trustees it's my privilege to welcome you here at the Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living or the Oasis as it is whoever you are and whoever you are here you're truly welcome you'll be validated and supported to be all that you were meant to be our vision statement is love in action every day in every way and we express this love by living the declaration of principles if you join me on the back of your bulletin, you'll see where it says Declaration of Principles. And if we read these slowly and meaningfully, I believe there's an infinite intelligence operating throughout the universe. I believe this intelligent power is only good. I believe this intelligence expresses as me. I believe through my conscious use of this power, I create in my life as happy, healthy, and complete. And so it is. So it is. <laughs> Let's give Bruce a big hand. He's so modest, he's shaking his head. <laughs> and I think that's the end of the announcements. If you have a cell phone on you, would you please silence your cell phone? Thank you. I don't know about you, but I get so tickled every time a new trustee comes up to speak. It's like, oh, we're, we're home, we're home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, since it is the first Sunday of a new month, I have a new meditation song for you. As a so below, as within, so
morning. How is everyone today? Good to see you all. Um, I wanted to talk a minute for about our practitioners. Our practitioners have been making some beautiful, wonderful meditations that are available on our Facebook page. There's a direct link in the e-news. If you look at the e-news, some of those, Don has been really good at creating direct links and you just click on that and it'll take you right to our Facebook page. And I do not believe that you have to have a Facebook page in order to listen to our meditations. And they're advertised as Friday morning at 10 o'clock. But the good news is they're all archived on our Facebook page. So anytime you want to, you go to our Facebook page, Sonoran Desert Center for Spiritual Living Facebook, Dot com and click on videos when you click on videos you will be then there's individual playlist so you look for the playlist that says meditation and they're all on there and there's even some treatments um, Karen King um, did the last Friday's meditation it is awesome it's all about how to build your immune system it's really, really good, and I encourage you to go listen to that. And we also have recorded treatments. Um, if you look in the e-news, you go to our website. Heather's been doing an awesome job updating our website, and we have recorded treatments. So if you find yourself a little bit off kilter, go click on one of our treatments and get uplifted and recentered. Faith lifts. Faith lifts. Get a faith lift. And the price is great. So Reverend Donna's talk is titled The Never Ending Story. I could not remember if I'd seen it before. By the way, that's one of the great advantages of being this age. You, <laughs> you can watch the same movie over and over again and it's just like brand new. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. It was created 36 years ago, and the message is so timely for today. So I'm happy to be here with you today as your practitioner of the day and to share my thoughts about radical forgiveness. What else did you think I was going to talk about? <laughs> First, let's relax into the invocation. So relaxing into the knowing, I take a breath. Here in this place, right here and now, I feel the immense degree of love that infiltrates every molecule of life, every moment in time, and through each stage of change. Knowing that change is inevitable, I let go of fear. I trust in the infinite powers plan for everyone in my life. 
I know that whatever happens is for the highest and best of all concern, despite any degree of confusion or pain I may be experiencing. I can allow pain and confusion to move through me and not take up residence. I choose to allow peace, love, and power to reside within in such a concentrated form that my feelings are loving. My thoughts are peaceful and my life is powerful. Let us enjoy the message and the music today. Let us open, listen with open ears and hold it with open hearts. Remember, we are the one who amplifies the power of love. We are the ones who invite the good into every mind, every decision, every perception. We are the ones that appreciate all the aspects of life. And together we say, and so it is. So I found it very fitting that this morning Eckhart Tolle's emailed meme says, the most important step out of karmic law is through forgiveness. <laughs> Radical forgiveness takes a spiritual approach to the process, offering a much deeper experience than traditional forgiveness. This process works. I have watched others and myself go through it and come out the other side with a whole new perspective. Perspective is very powerful. I want you to play with me for a minute. I'm gonna ask you to put on your blinders and look straight ahead, look up towards the stage with your blinders on. Put your hands up beside your eyes and look straight up at the stage and in your own mind, say what you see, what you sense, what you feel. Now, maybe you saw a podium, you saw this building, this building sort of blocks your view. Now as comfortably as you can, turn your face this way, which is at your left. <laughs> You're right? All right, as far as you can. And now, what do you see? A whole new perspective. Describe to yourself what you see. It's more of an unlimited potential, isn't it? There's nothing blocking your view. And if you take a moment to notice, okay, you can relax. Uh, if you had a different feeling, a different perspective creates a different feeling. That is a snippet of how radical forgiveness works. It dissolves limiting viewpoints, assumptions, and limited perceptions. When we are nakedly honest with ourselves, we will find some core negative beliefs that we have been operating from for a long time, perhaps since childhood. So many of us have this one, I'm not good enough. How about, it's not safe for me. No matter how hard I try, it's never enough. Or, I'm always left out. Those are just some few examples. Using the five stages of radical forgiveness, we learn to celebrate the new awareness of these negative beliefs as now we can form a whole new perspective and allow them to dissolve, no longer informing our thoughts and behaviors. You cannot heal what you do not allow to come forth. Our old feeling habits have been to deny, suppress, and negate any negative feelings about an event. Of course, when it's a traumatic event, our natural reaction goes into denial so we can continue to get through the situation without collapsing. The problem arises 35 years later when we discover through our new openness, we are still 
using that defense to get through. Holding on to denial of pain also blocks us from experiencing love. This is a statement to think about. Denial of pain blocks us from experiencing love. I've heard it many times. I didn't know how much it was true. Unblocking old feeling habits frees us up to experience a whole new perspective, one of love, acceptance of others, and a true relationship with inner peace. I sometimes catch myself these days smiling for no particular reason. Perhaps like me, you've taken classes. Each one helps along the journey to freedom. One thing I've learned though, it's not enough to know. We have to know how. The forgiveness work is the how. How to live from the soul where there's a place inside each and every one of us that has never been touched by human frailties, disease, or despair. A place where love and peace are the primary informers. I invite you to visit this place within yourself. The Forgiveness Workshop information is in the e-news, it's on Facebook, and uh, the registration has been extended. I said November 4th, Donna said November 6th, it's okay. And it's uh, gonna be held on Zoom, five Saturday mornings. If you have a problem with Zoom, I can help you with that. And thank you. May you be blessed this day and walk in the beauty of a new perspective where all is calm, bright, and well. Namaste. My heart is open to for being here and uh, first off <laughs> I want to thank uh, John Lopez for uh, filling in for me last week <laughs> I don't know if you know the story but he had about 45 mi 45 seconds prior notice um, but he did a wonderful job um, <laughs> thank you John thank you um, what happened is I had my right knee hurts I'm, I'm scheduled for knee surgery but um, I decided to take a, a new pain pill on Saturday night and I woke up completely nauseated so um, I drove down here but I knew I couldn't make it through the service so um, I asked John if he'd take it and he said fine he thought I was talking about the practitioner service not the entire service he didn't realize that he was up for the entire service until I drove off the, the, the area you know? so, so, um, so it's really kind of amazing how spirit can just jump right in and work through each and every one of us it's pretty amazing so we've been looking all month uh, about stories that touch our heart 
And, uh, and, and we're concluding with our final fairy tale today. I'm so glad that you brought in Cinderella last week. That was perfect. Um, but perhaps the most important um, element that is part of every mythic story, every fairy tale, is that the hero or the heroine brings back from their journey, their hero's journey, they bring back their own transformation. And it's this transformation, this shift from emphasis on the material reward to the inner knowledge of the self that is the true gift of the hero or the heroine. So every time a story touches our heart, it's touching our own hero's journey, that need to understand our own inner life and to live from it. So today, our story, our fairy tale, takes us beyond the story of life on earth and connects us with eternity. I'm calling it the never ending story, but it's, a, it's from a book called Fierce Fairy Tales by Nikita Gill. Once upon a time, matter dreamed up an idea. It was a small, hopeful dream, a thought with the wings of a fairy. But as with all things full of hope, it would be terribly difficult to birth. Several events needed to come together in the millisecond of the time it took to build Earth. It depended on a one in 10 to the 2 millionth degree chance of existing, to, to power, chance of existing, a 1 in 20,000 chance meeting between two beings, an ancestral heritage that goes back 4 billion years all the way to single-celled organisms. And only then can this idea be crafted into a gift with actual presence. Imagine how much the universe must have loved this thing to make it happen. Imagine how many stars gave up their hearts to bring this into fluid motion. Does it make you curious? Make you wonder what could be so marvelous? That idea? It was you. You are the universe's fairy tale come true. So what I love about this fairy tale is that our story yours and mine actually begin with or before the Big Bang. You and I have within us atoms and molecules that were formed from the energy of the stars. Astronomer Carl Sagan said, the cosmos is within us, we are made of star stuff. We are a way for the universe to know itself. And author Alan Watts said, through our eyes, the universe is perceiving itself through our ears, the universe is listening to its harmonies. We are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of itself, of its glory, of its magnificence. And even more contemporary, Eckhart Tolle tells us you are not in the universe. You are the universe, an intrinsic part of it. Ultimately, you are not a person, but a focal point where the universe is becoming conscious of itself. What an amazing miracle. So if our story begins in the cosmos, then where does it end? Or does it? You know, our, our human life on this planet has been defined as a parenthesis in eternity. In the alchemist, Paolo Co Co Hello, Coelho writes, we are travelers on a cosmic journey stardust swirling and dancing in the eddies and whirlpools of infinity. Life is eternal. We have stopped for a moment to encounter each other, to meet, to love, to share. This is a precious moment. It is a little parenthesis in eternity. So on this infinite timeline, you and I have come into the world in this place and in this time, this is our unique parenthesis in eternity, in order to add to that never ending story that is the universe unfolding. And when we see the story of our own unfoldment from this perspective, we can see that whatever has come before us is an integral part of our story. You know, I said before that myths and archetypes, uh, myth fairy tales and archetypal stories give us a sense 
of the cohesion we as we recognize patterns as bone deeply familiar. Love that statement. We're not alone. We are connected to an ancestral storehouse of experience and embedded within those tales are the solutions and the instructions for how to navigate difficulty with grace and wisdom. And that leads us to the next part of our fairy tale. Nikita Gill writes, but the universe never promised you this would be easy. After all, you are the hero here. And heroes are meant to be forged golden from the blaze. It is up to you to rise again from the fragmented shards your foes left of you. You must lift a sword with reborn strength and take on the demons in your rib cage. You must devastate the chains every violent person has brutally placed on you. And you must show them all how they were simply characters in your story. But you, you are the author of this spellbinding tale built of hope and bravery. Out there may be monsters, my dear, but in you still lives the dragon that you should always believe in. So the dragon we believe in is our own true sense of self, our own sense of who we truly are. We've slain our monsters and we know what to do if more come. We've been transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's why we're here in this particular philosophy. We have faith that we are part of a universe that is becoming conscious of its own magnificence. And we claim that magnificence is also ours by divine heritage. And for the cynics among us who cannot believe that this is our true story and our own fairy tale, Nikita continues. Our current cosmic address is a small flying piece of rubble traveling through an endless black void surrounded inexplicably by seven other pieces of rubble. All of these pieces harmoniously rotate around the same giant fireball without ever crashing into each other or hurtling themselves into said fireball. And if that isn't random enough, out of all those pieces of rubble, ours is the only one that sustains an environment that gives life to billions of different life forms, including a multitude of flowering plants, oxygen-giving trees, a plethora of wildlife, and eight billion human beings. And somehow, you still generally think that magic does not exist, that fairy tales aren't real, that the way people find each other at just the right time and at just the right moment isn't the most powerful sorcery. So you and I know that our fairy tale is real. There are nudges from the universe all around us. We need only step out and look at the star-studded night sky or a midday monsoon with a triple rainbow or the phone rings and it's the person that you were just thinking about or the love and connection we feel here with our spiritual family. There are miracles every moment, whispers from the infinite that tell us that we are so much more than what is contained, as our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes once said, between our hat and our bootstraps. <laughs> so these are the daily miracles that remind us that we are the universe's fairy tale come true. And this little parenthesis we call our life is only a tiny part of our story. In late summer of 1977, Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched from Cape Canaveral, Canaveral, Florida. And after delivering incredible pictures and data of our own solar system, Voyager 1 continued its journey into the outer reaches of space entering interstellar space in August of 2012. As it leaves our solar system behind, this robotic spacecraft is, stre is streaking toward an encounter with a star called AC plus 79388, which lies 17.6 light years from Earth, about 40,000 years away. We are a people of story, 
We come from story, we continue story. That's who and what we are about. And because we need to connect, and because we are a people of story, on board Voyager 1 is a golden record and a player. Contents of the record were selected by NASA by a committee chaired by Dr. Carl Sagan. There's 115 images and a variety of natural sounds, such as those made by the wind, surf, and thunder, birds, whales, and other animals. And to this, they added musical selections from different cultures and eras and spoken greetings from Earth people in 55 languages. There is a young child bringing greetings from the children of the Earth. And there are printed messages from then President Jimmy Carter and UN Secretary General, General Kurt Waldheim. So Nikita Gill now hands the balance of our fairy tale over to those alien beings who will find our little spaceship 40,000 years from now. In the far corner of the Virgo supercluster, a small galaxy called the Milky Way exists. And in one of the further spirals of that galaxy, there is said to be a tiny planet called Earth. At a cursory glance, there is nothing seemingly unique about this planet, even though it's simply beautiful, cloaked in calypso blue with an oscillating belt of green. In fact, it is one of millions like it that live in just this universe. The extraordinary thing about this planet, though, are the beings that exist on it. They have been through war after war, war empires that promised to turn brighter, to burn brighter than the re their resident star, the sun, and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Savage rulers, dictators have, been destroyed, have destroyed entire portions of it, and yet they simply refuse to stop existing is like, it is like they have this treasured thing within them to keep them surviving and to keep knowing. Look closer now, O oh passerby, look closer at these beings. They are survivors with a sense of awe and curiosity at everything around them. Sometimes they lose their way. But this, is thing, but this is a thing they never seem to lose because they are so full of potential, so full of promise. This planet may be called Earth, but it should have been called Promise. And if you do not believe this little story and dismiss it as a silly old wives' tale, a thing which cannot possibly exist, then I hope you come across their legendary message. You see, 40 years ago, these beings sent out a message on a space probe that has traveled 20.5 billion kilometers, hoping to meet one of us in space. In it lies a message, the definition of this entire species. And it reads simply, this is a present from a small distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts, and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so that we may live into yours. The Voyager is still out there waiting for someone to come upon it. Maybe that someone is you. Maybe you will remind that species of the greatness that lies in their potential, their promise. Maybe you will be the being that turns that fairy tale planet of promise into an intergalactic legend of green and blue. You know, the little child that was on that original recording, giving greetings from the children of Earth, is probably around 55 years old today. And some of the adults that are on that record uh, have crossed their parentheses in time and no longer exist on the plane that you and I now play. And yet they're all a part of our story, which is being carried through space and time in a tiny vehicle whose trajectory is set for a star light years away. And if someone or some species does pick up our message in 40,000 years, then they too become a part of the story that we have all woven together. You know, so where is our spiritual message in this never-ending tale? Um, to me, 
It's a testament that life continues well beyond our little parenthesis. You know, you and I, we read books, we take classes, we, we listen to talks to learn how to demonstrate good in our life. We learn to align ourselves with the attributes of God so that we are a beneficial presence you know, in this world. But we all often don't talk about death, about our own mortality. And I think our own inner peace is strengthened when we see our life as a continuum that has no beginning and no end. Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us the spiritual nature of the universe, God, mind, intelligence, from all viewpoints, science, philosophy, and religion, always was, always is, and always will be, without beginning and without end, eternal, immortal. If we are a creation of that which is eternal and immortal, if we are a creation of God, and God is what we are, can what we are be other than immortal and eternal? And when our personal experiences bring us to the depths of despair, when we see the devastation that this pandemic is causing worldwide, when we find ourselves handed a life-threatening diagnosis, our stories tell us that we are at the point in the, of the fairy tale where Snow White has eaten the poisoned apple. And if we stop there, if we give up, if we allow our despair to overtake us, then we never find that happy ending, that love prevails and life is eternal. When we are, see ourselves not as a human being with limitations, but a focal point of the universe, then we no longer fear death. And that is perhaps the most freeing thing we can do for ourselves on our spiritual journey. Dr. Holmes says, if we know that life never began and will never end, we will be fortified and inspired to begin the work of, being, of bringing perfection into our daily life. When we, can, when we understand that God is incarnated in us, that we are a new creation, an individual impartation of that which is divine, we feel a new birth when we grasp that this divine thing in us which longs to be, will always be, then will our intellect see it and our emotion respond to it and life can no longer frighten us. So you and I are part of this never ending story and through our eyes, yours and mine, the universe is perceiving itself. Through our ears, the universe is listening to its harmonies. And there's a little bird that's over there, that's sweet. <laughs> We are the witnesses. You and I are the witnesses through which the universe becomes conscious of its glory. It's our story, yours and mine, that makes the universe's fairy tale come true. And that is a story that should touch all of our hearts. Thank you. Namaste. stands beside me that I cannot see. I am the one who I can visit, who I forget to be. I am the one who listens quietly when I need to talk. Oh, 
than once. You know, we have these these things that, that just kind of pop in, and it and it and it. Well, I like to say what it does. It turns it turns from a Sunday service into an happening. You know, it, it's like you can't. You know, it was a good time, but you can't put your finger on any one thing that says this is it, because it's so cohesive, and I love it when that happens. So thank you, Heather. It was perfect. Okay, we're going to do an offering affirmation. This is only as a reminder um, that we do have an offering basket as, 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 as you go out to the parking lot. So just, to, just as a reminder, will you join me in our offering af affirmation on the left-hand side of our bulletin? My gift goes forth to heal, prosper, and bless all that it touches. It is evidence of my conviction that God is a source and substance of my supply. I share generously of my good, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly, and so it is. Thank you very much, and uh, let's take a moment to close this, this uh, service out in treatment and prayer. So I know right now that there is one life, one mind, one heart, is a life, mind, heart of God. And that life expresses, animates through each and every one of us. That heart beats through each heart. And knowing this, I know that I can speak my word and there is a response from the universe to the words that I speak. So right now, this day, I speak my word for peace and harmony as we look upon the election to come this week. We speak our word that every leader, every person who is responsible for all of the things to make our voting happen are guided by spirit, by truth, by heart. I speak my word for anyone who's experiencing any kind of fear or direct contact with this pandemic to know too that right where we are is the power and presence of God. I speak my word for anyone who's experiencing any kind of personal challenge to also know that right where that challenge is is the healing, reconstructive power of that one mind, that one intelligence. So I give thanks for the opportunity to speak my word this morning and to know for each and every one of us that God is all there is and that we are each a magnificent manifestation of that one. And we anchor this treatment by saying together, and so it is. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. family.